news, everyone. Let's get dangerous. This is so cool. I know. It feels so right. It's Jake Sealy. He's opening our minds to new ideas. Kill him. Who is that guy? Your mama. You just made the list. <laughs> oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. It's all in fantasy. Days of the rain. So what? We talk about it all the time. Really? No. Burn. Game on, you ducks. It is week 11 of the fantasy football season. We are officially in the back half and getting towards the end, but we are still talking waivers because there is still help for you out there. And as going forward will be the theme, we are now doing guests, especially for the waiver show. And this week we have Tip Major. Follow him. It's very simple. At Tip Major, but two two P's in that. So T-I-P-P. Not, like, not Q-Tip Major. It's just not regular Q-tip. Tip Major. Yeah. No, no. But they appreciate the callback there, don't you? <laughs> He, uh, he does a podcast, or is a podcast or is a live show that you do with Bob Harris, which, by the way, is the, I call him the godfather of fantasy, so yeah. it's, it's cool that you do stuff with him. Yeah, you know, last year uh, I did a show with him, and it was Spaces on X, so we did a space. Uh, we haven't had a chance to get to it this year because he's, you know, with football guys now, and he's, like, super busy, yeah. but I do have a show with Greg Kellogg um, and the Sports Affiliation, another Hall of Famer, and Greg and I have a Thursday checkdown show Every Thursday night before the game, um, seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Nice, and uh, so make sure you're checking all that out and give Tip a follow. And also, good timing for this podcast because as we're set to record this, I, I, when you watch later, you watch later. But as we do this, we get news just as we were about to come on. Not waiver specific, but we do cover a little bit right here because we're going to talk Monday Night Football too. But yes, yeah, Shane Waldron, he is officially gone. Uh, I don't know who's celebrating more, Tip, uh, the Bears fans or Jackson Smith and Jigba. Like, <laughs> like one of the two. I have a feeling they're all happy at this point. But you know what? It's it's funny to say like we're happy because they're gonna you know turn the reins over, so to speak. But I don't think it's gonna be a massive change, at least for us in fantasy. Like, I think we're still gonna get the biggest issue here is the offensive line play is hurting Caleb Williams. But what I've continued to say is hurting Caleb Williams is what we knew was the issue coming out of college. We knew that he extends plays, but instead of extending plays and liking to run, which is part of the reason that I said for fantasy purposes, might not have the ceiling of the guys that we want to be inside the top 10. Like not even Daniel Jones rushing because while he could have that, he doesn't take off enough. He tries to extend plays and find something, find something, find something, and then makes a bad decision. That hasn't changed. I still think there's hope. He's still a very, very talented quarterback. But for us, talking fantasy specifically for 2024, I don't think we're going to see a noticeable change down the back half where I would almost consider this a sell-high opportunity if you were holding on to DJ Moore still or even a, a Dunze. Are you with me on this, or do you think there's a little yeah. bit more hope? I, I, there might be a little bit more hope just because sometimes when you have a, a coaching philosophy change, look at what happened with the Saints this this past week. Sometimes it does kind of rally the troops and kind of rouse them up a little bit. But again, nine point they've averaged nine points the last three games. That is atrocious. That that's bad. And I don't think it's going to get much better than that. What are they going to jump up to twenty five points a game? No, I don't think it's going to happen just because of the offense. Just because of the offensive line. Just you talked about they don't run the ball enough. Uh, they, they got rid of Khalil Herbert, which I understand, but I just don't think it's going to be a drastic change either. If you had to, would you go get DJ Moore on like the flip side? If you have somebody who's a DJ uh, manager like myself, where it's like, I'm just tired of it. Would you try to get more? Or do you think Adunze's recent, I don't want to call it ascension, but slight improvement is the one, or is, put it this way. Is there one wide receiver you feel like might benefit the most from no more Waldron, or is it just going to continue to be a frustrating, it's a three-headed monster, and it's, it's a, it's it's gonna a mess? It's going to be frustrating. It's going to be frustrating. It's it's one of those situations where even coming into the season, I figured it would be a little frustrating at times, but I just thought DJ Moore was just that good. But he looks frustrated. <laughs> he looks He looks like he's just not engaged. Uh, there was a there was a clip that we that a friend of mine showed me uh, just a couple of weeks ago where they were in the middle of a play. He kind of had like a little little tweak or something, maybe in his ankle. The one where he feet. ran and sat down. Yeah, and he ran and <laughs> sat down. And I was like, and when, when my friend told me about it, I was like, what the? I was like, that's crazy. And and sure enough, that's exactly what he did. And I was just like, he just doesn't seem engaged with the situation. Uh, maybe a little frustration with the rookie. Uh, I just I, I'm not touching it, man. I, I was I was big on Cole Komet, but now I'm not even 
on that strain anymore. And the worst part about it is it's not like they have a good schedule to make this rebound because it's one of the worst schedules for us for fantasy purposes going forward. It was one of the reasons I've been pounding the table to sell high on DeAndre Swift even potentially before the Patriots game because if – he didn't have a great game, against, which has happened. I'm not saying that, but you're like, ha-ha. I'm just like, that's always the risk because this, right. this schedule is one of the worst for running backs, but it's also one of the worst all around. But let's talk maybe a little bit positive-ish. Quickly on Monday Night Football, I say that because Puka Nakua bounced back game after punching somebody in the face. It's very easy to bounce back from that. But Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, on the downside, I think the only – takeaway we could have from this game we say like like that was obvious we knew Nakua would be Nakua we knew Cup would be Cup as long as they're healthy Stafford has been playing well with both of them Kyron was kind of quiet in this game Tyreek Hill we got that news right before Monday Night Football that he was going to play through it but come to find out apparently this is an injury he's been dealing with since preseason and the Dolphins got their win so this is how I want to spin it to you it's like Kyron's going to have better days. I'm not really putting too much stock in that. Uh, you're shaking your head, so I have a feeling you agree. The Tyreek Hill one, because mm. we've been like, oh, it's Tyreek Hill. You just have to play him. You have to play him. You have to play him. Is there a world, and I'm not going to say like whether you play him or not, because that's not a decision most people are going to have to make. It's not like, oh, I could bench Tyreek Hill. I'm going to plug into Marcus Robinson last night. <laughs> the question would be this. If you have Tyreek Hill on your team, would you trade him away for – I don't want to say anything, but you're not going to get top five value. You're probably, maybe, probably not going to get top 10. If you could get even top tier wide receiver two value for him, would you? Because the other thing we're looking at is they happen to save their playoff hopes, fringy. They're still three and six. They really need a lot to break right. But between the injuries to him, Tua, and everything, like, do you just feel like, oh my God, in three weeks, it could just be the end of the season for Tyreek Hill. Let me just get away and avoid that risk. Or is, is his upside too much for you? That that is definitely something I thought about as a Tyreek Hill manager. I do have him <laughs> on a couple of teams, so I did think about that uh, a lot. The, I, I thought about that heading into this week because I was like, "Look, he can't be he can't be this bad, right?" And then you get the whole injury right. about the wrist, and then you get the whole story about him getting arrested, and that supposedly he said that that even affected his wrist even more with the ligament issue. So, I, it, for me, I think you have to hold on to tight because you're just not going to get anything back for him that you spent on that draft capital. So I think that, look, you just hope for the best. Look, he got in the end zone yesterday. He did some kind of weird – did you see the the WWE move that he pulled? Yeah. In the end zone? Like, that, that, <laughs> come on, dude, you got a wrist injury. Why are you doing that? Like, <laughs> now, now, so, you know, I'm with you. I appreciate the celebration, but at the yeah. second part of it, I was like, uh, maybe something not so risky there. Right. Like, dude, just go and give your guys a hand, uh, a high five, uh, you know, give them a hug or something, but not the WWE stuff, man. Like – <laughs> that, that 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 threw me off. So I was kind of like, well, is his wrist really that bad? Or is he just trying to get a little bit more attention? Maybe trying to get a little bit more M's in the wallet because of you know the <laughs> Miami situation. I, I don't I don't know, but I, I have to hold on to Tyreek Hill right now. He's got a really easy schedule coming up, especially yep. in the playoffs. Uh I, I think that that could be the time where he really, 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 you know, starts to get something going if the Miami Dolphins are still contending. So that that there's a lot of factors in this, but I, I'm still holding ifs. out hope. Yeah, I'm still holding out hope. All right. Well, then let me spin it this way to you because I think this is a fun toss-up to have. We Let's talk the, the Cowboys because <laughs> I had my preview podcast before the weekend and then the recap podcast after the weekend. And I did touch on them in the recap, and I said, this is bad. This is – like we knew it was bad. And – to give you fill-in information. So everybody listening to the podcast, you maybe skip forward 30 seconds because I'm about to say something you heard in the last two. But I said this wasn't 2022 Cooper Rush. This not only wasn't 2022 Cooper Rush, this wasn't that Cowboys team, which was a contending team. Great offensive line, great backfield, great weapons up and down the roster. And it's like, I'm not going to expect CeeDee Lamb to do what he did with Cooper Rush in 2022. That being said, the reason I say that it's because I also didn't expect it to be that bad. I wasn't expecting Cooper Rush to attempt two yards of pass. I wasn't expecting it to just fall completely apart at the seams when barely any completions, and yet somehow CeeDee Lamb still got seven, eight points, depending on your league. So it's let me say good. this. How worried would you be about CeeDee Lamb going forward? And if you could, if you had Lamb and then the Tyree Kill manager was super worried which put it that way would you rather have hill or lamb going forward hearing that at least for now cooper rush is back under center for at least one more week i i rather have hill i rather have hill. Okay. it's just yeah the whole thing with the cd lamb i get it i i he is the focal point in this offense but also on the flip side he's the focal point of the other 
the team's defense. defense. They're going to be they're going to be sinking in on him at all times because they know they're at a handicap as far as what it goes with their quarterback. You know, having Dak Prescott not there, his it's just not going to be good for the Cowboys. Their offensive line is not as good. Yeah, they got Michael Parsons back. They might have some more opportunities here and there. They have no run game. I just no. I'd rather have Tyreek Hill at this point right now because it does look like Dak could miss this week, could miss some more time even after that. And then they just might start tanking it in because they're just like, why? You know, shit already. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and get let's go ahead and get uh, you know that big you know a draft next week next year and see what happens. But I got I got to say one little thing though too, and this has been something that's been talked about for a long time. But did you see that photo of the sunlight coming into the end zone? Yes. Uh, I, I mean, like, dude, Jerry Jones, get some curtains, get some, get some, <laughs> get some, get some, get some, like, like dark tinted glass, something, dude. Like, you are giving. I understand it's an advantage for it's it's a disadvantage for both teams, but I mean, you're at home. That is your advantage, supposedly. Right. And I I think you got to get something going on, uh, you know, with that with that sunlight. I know a lot of stadiums are going to it. But some stadiums are doing it in like downtown areas. Like I think the Minnesota is like in a downtown area where you have buildings right. that are going to cover the sunlight. Or this like is, LA, I, where you got that hybrid thing. Kind right. Of, whatever like this you is call in it. the middle of, of of a field, supposedly next. To and it's a, just a wide open spot. Like there's no yeah. get. Oh, hey, I'll tell you what though. What a surprise that Jerry Jones doesn't know what he's doing about something. <laughs> like he thinks he, like he's he's the epitome of the what is not what i forget the first part of the saying but then it's master of none it's like oh. it's like he's he's good at a lot of things obviously he's good in the business side of the world because he's yeah. a billionaire yeah but on the flip side he's just not good at a lot of things so so let me give you a toss-up because we are talking waivers and we will the rest of the show but i'll give you a toss-up that was a very hot waiver pick which I thought was super interesting. He fell under 60% when people dropped him during his buy, which I was like, why? Like, I, I know you have to make cuts somewhere, but given what Cedric Tillman has done oh, since the man. change with Jameis Winston, would you go CeeDee Lamb or Cedric Tillman for the rest of the season? I think that's a legitimate toss up. I, you know, it's funny when, when you said, when you said CeeDee Lamb, I, I well, when you said Tyreek Hill, I actually started thinking a little bit about Cedric Tillman. And then when you said CD Lamb, I really started thinking about Cedric Tillman. Cedric Tillman has been a number one wide receiver the last three weeks. As, 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 as long as Jameis Winston has been in there, he is he's averaging 22 points. He is on fire. He is someone that 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 Jameis Winston is looking to. And not only that, they got a revenge game coming up. Jameis Winston's going to <laughs> revenge. New Orleans. Revenge. He's, 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 he, you know, he's, 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 you know, you know how Jameis Winston, you know, he's going to have a fiery speech. He's going to be eating W's, doing all sorts of crazy stuff against him. So I look, I, I love Cedric Tillman. I think that he is legit. I think that it is a real thing. And if you are a CD Lamb manager, I think you can try to say, look, I, I'll get, look, you know, you try to, you try to spin it off to where, you're not you're, you're you're actually doing him a favor or they're the other person a favor by getting them CD land and just saying, well, you can throw in Cedric Tillman and hopefully that person is. Yeah, get him as like a twofer. <laughs> right. And maybe they're not paying attention as much or maybe, you know, their team's in shambles and you could try to get a twofer for him because of the name CD Lamb, you know. I might do the same thing with Tyreek Hill, honestly, at this point. Like, uh, no, not, I would not straight up Tyreek Hill, but like right. straight, like if I need running back help and I could get running back and Tillman, because I don't think the drop off from Tillman to, or drop off from Hill to Tillman would be that severe that if you're also getting help or a piece that you would actually start. I'm not talking about a flyer running back to make that clear for everybody. Actually, here, I'll give you one more before we move on. Former Cowboy, Amari Cooper or CeeDee Lamb rest of the season. Because Amari Cooper's not healthy, but it, maybe yeah. next week he's going to be healthy. Maybe, maybe he'll yeah. be the lead of the Bills. Because I'm a Khalil Shakir guy, but mm -hmm. I said this in the waivers because I do a worry report. And um, I also said on the pocket, I'm like not that worried about Khalil Shakir. My point about Shakir was that he's always a wide receiver three, no matter if he's the one or the three or even the two. It's just because... He's one of those wide receivers to similar to what we see with Michael Wilson with the Cardinals. Like some wide receivers, when you ask to be the one, are just not equipped to be the one. Like not, I said this on yesterday on Sirius XM with Dane. It's like, surprisingly, there aren't 32 ones in the NFL or 64 <laughs> ones in the NFL. Like there's certain, there's a reason these talents are talents. So it's not saying like Shakir's a bad player. Right. It's just, he's not equipped to be a number one wide receiver. So somebody needs to come back, Coleman or Cooper. And I think that if Cooper gets integrated at some point, I think he has the upside to be a top 20 wide receiver. And I like that what you just said. I actually think you could go get, 
you could take Lamb, spin him into Cooper, and a piece. Like you're not nobody's going to give you. But I think there's a conversation that Cooper versus Lamb is interesting going forward. It is. It, it, it's it's really interesting. I just want to know what what's going on. You know, Amari Cooper. Like what's with the injury? <laughs> yeah, like questionable the whole time. Uh, you know, leading up to the game and all of a sudden out. And, and this is the second game in the row. You know, Coleman. I, I, I want I want pieces of that Buffalo offense, you know, especially right. Josh Allen throwing the ball to them. I want pieces of that. So I would I, I would, it, and it also depends on my wide receiving room. It depends on how they look. But if I have like, let's say I had a CD Lamb and I had, um, you know, maybe a because I do have this in one league. I have a CD Lamb and I have a AJ Brown. I have I have okay. and and so that way you know I know AJ Brown can still get his he's somewhat healthy you know at this point in the in the in the season so I could actually do hey I could get CD Lamb uh, trade him and then flip him over for Amari Cooper that wouldn't be a bad deal because you still have that number one option in AJ Brown so uh, if if so you Cooper's have something not like your that one, yeah. yeah so Cooper's not the one so if if you have something like that where Cooper can slide in and be a number two but eventually give you possible wide receiver one numbers. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Like a Cooper and maybe I'm trying to think like Brian Robinson. Hopefully he gets yeah. back healthy. It's a lot of risk, but I'm shooting for upside on that ceiling there. Actually, you know what? I do want to ask you that real quick because it is week 11. When do you start like for your teams? When do you start thinking about the playoffs slash stashing a second quarterback, stashing a second defense? Uh, because we're still at the point we have quite a few buys over the next two weeks. Week right. 14 buys are staring us in the face. Yeah. Good God. Thank you, Crazy. NFL, for that. Right. Um, so, wait, like, you know, right about last week to now is where I start thinking about it. And maybe mostly I'll, like, lean to, like, a second quarterback. Uh, we talked about on um, the, the Sirius XM show, show, too, is that Kyler Murray, if you're worried about his two tough games and the buy, the person that lines up perfectly with him is Justin Herbert. Go look at it. The schedules yes. are perfect to play yes. matchups in their buys. Um, but that being said, like, that's already started to enter my mind. Are you of that thought process where you're, like, also looking like, ooh, maybe I trade away somebody who's got a really bad three-game playoff schedule? Or is Week 11 still a little bit too early for you which way do you no, lean to i i lean i lean sort of towards yours i i've been looking right around week eight ish is kind of when i was like okay this team is for sure gonna make the playoffs i got a couple that aren't but i got like this team is for sure gonna make the playoffs okay i got situations in week 14 because who doesn't as far as a buy goes <laughs> and so okay i need to make the move for that right now and i did make some moves so right around week eight week nine because this point right now where we're at week 10 and week 11, other people are gearing up for the playoffs just like you are. So that's kind of where I look at it. I look at it right around week eight, maybe a week before the half halfway point. So that, that's where I started looking around eight. Okay. So tying into this and we'll talk some running backs here is also with waivers. Uh, do you kind of like me at this point, And it was kind of already like week nine, 10, I was already leaning this way, but it's, basically super heavy once we start hitting the second half is I'm done trying to unless like I understand there's context dude, like somebody has an injury so I need somebody to play this week that's different I'm just talking about in general overall waiver strategy like now I'm shooting for ceiling because that's actually going to lean into the first running back we talk about like I'm shooting for potential top 20 players I'm not trying to pick up Random wide receiver. Like, uh, I just had a huge debate the other day. I was like, I don't want DeMario, du DeMario Douglas. I have to do the DeMario thing. <laughs> I don't want DeMario Douglas. I don't. Like, like, there's nothing like, but if. No, I do not want DeMario Douglas. I don't want seven points a game. Hopefully, two more games the rest of the season. Maybe he hits double digits. But I don't want that anymore. Maybe if we were talking week two, sure. You can see what happens. Maybe he breaks out a little bit. But at this point in the season, I'd rather chase... Jalen Polk than Demarion Douglas. Even though I know Polk's not going to be a thing. Like my point being is, I'm chasing top twenty now. I'm not just trying to fill out my roster. Yeah, it, it, you're right. You you were trying to fill out your roster. You're chasing these games that are these team these players that have favorable matchups. And yeah, I, there's a couple of guys on here who have favorable matchups who have, are on good teams. It's just I can't trust some of the coaches. I cannot trust <laughs> Sean Payton. I'm sorry. I know Adric Estime is like the bee's knees. Right oh, now. well, we're going to have to talk him. about him a second. Yeah, I, 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 there's just certain players. I just, there's coaches. I just don't trust. I'm like, oh, I'd rather go for somebody, like you said, who has big upside, who's maybe uh, uh, with a running back who's a little older, who may be getting a little bit, you know, 
possibly has a history of being banged up. Um, I'm looking at some of those kind of di- like those those dynamics, those those players for the playoffs push because you always have that one young stud rookie or one rookie that you know hasn't done anything all season long, and then somebody gets banged up, and then here they go for the playoffs, and then you're like, oh wow, I missed out on that. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll I, if I can go ahead and tell you a guy that I'm looking at. Oh, I know. I'll can you. I guess the name? I know the name. What is the name? Trey Benson. You got it. You got it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, I, look, the last couple of weeks, the thing, the thing. Well, that, hold on. Benson, That's why, because actually last week when we did the podcast, we uh-huh. figured, so, uh, like, we, we figured out uh, James Conner is actually Santa Claus. That's why he always disappears in December. Like, that's, that's why. So I, that's why I knew you we were going. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's, it's like the opposite effect of what, what Derrick Henry and Najee Harris have in, in the colder months. It's like James Harris, right. J, J, James Conner, where do you go? Like, it, it's so <laughs> this is a situation where for me, Trey Benson is one of those guys. He catches the ball out of the backfield. He's fast. He's elusive. When, once he gets his the, the vision was an issue. Now he's starting to go north and south instead of trying to go east and west because he understands, hey, I'm 6'1". I'm 230 pounds. Maybe I can run over <laughs> one of these safety <laughs> like you know so 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 once he does that once he understands that and you know he knows how big he has you know the the size that he has then look i think that this guy could be a, a, a i'm not gonna say league winner i'm not gonna say that but if something does happen with james Conner, he could be a focal point for you going forward so that's one of the reasons why i'm big on trey benson well, you heard it here first. Tip is saying that Trey Benson is the league winner, top 10 <laughs> running back, rest of the season. Just lock it in right now. <laughs> lock it in. Lock it in. <laughs> I do want to talk estimate, though, because yeah. uh, so here's exactly like I'll read you word for word. You're, this is from my okay. article. Okay. It says, I wouldn't go crazy for estimate. Uh, mentioned on the pod, blah, blah, blah. Estimate could be the lead, but it's likely a timeshare because it's Sean Payton and he changes his mind nearly every week. However, I did put estimate number one for this one reason. We are chasing ceiling at this point of the season. He's not a lock to even have the lead option, let alone a lead role where I put that volume in quotes. But just but if Sean Payton finally sticks with one person, he could be top 20, at least an RB2. So that's why he's the top running back. But it comes with a lot of context tip of like, you might be saying in two weeks, I can't believe you told me to pick up Estime. But I, that's why I prefaced it with, I wouldn't go crazy. Like if you play with Fab, which everybody should, I'd spend probably low teens of a total $100. So maybe if you still have 20% of whatever's left, like I would do that. If I missed out on him, be like, eh, okay. But I would go to try at least get him just in case. And, and Jake, I love what you said about the Sean Payton, the, the aspect there, because he is hard to trust. Like, he doesn't care. I, obviously, you know, he, he doesn't care about our fantasy teams. He does not. He, he <laughs> it doesn't even seem like he cares about his own team at times because of the, some of the things. Well, this is what I said. I, I think he's still trying to figure out the team. Like, right. I, th- I think I think 2024 is a valuation for Sean Payton with the look ahead to 2025, and they're playing better than anybody expected, which is a plus. But I think it's Sean Payton that's still, like, legitimately, like, Hey, does this work? Does this work? Uh, Troy Franklin was fun for one week, but then I really like, like, let's go back to Valley. Like, uh, like I really don't, th- I think Sean Payton is just trying to figure it out. And, and you know what? He did say something earlier in the season about Marvin Mims. He was saying that the, one of, <laughs> one of the, one of the, one of the commentators or the reporters said, are you going to get Marvin Mims involved? He was like, we would like to, we would love to, we, we want to get him involved. And it's just like you said, it's probably just an evaluation period at this point, but week 11, you would have probably thought by this time, all right, I've evaluated would know. all of my players, and they're like, you know, I, I would know, okay, now I need to start sticking with the guys I feel like are going to give us the best chance to win. He did it with Bo Nix. Now this backfield, I don't know, because all three of them are healthy at this point to, to an extent. I'm pretty sure they have nicks and bruises, but all of them are healthy to this point. I think for me to go with Audric Estime, it's going to have to take one of those injuries. One of those guys has to get injured. Uh, and, right. and I hate to say it, you know, knock on the wood, I don't like injuries. But for me to be really, really interested in him, I, of course, I'll take a couple flyers on him. I agree with you as far as the fab budget. You don't, you, you're not going to spend anything over, I would say, 15, six, 15 to 18 percent on him. I, I'm not going to even try to go higher than that. I would go a pitch higher uh, for for Trey for Trey Benson at this point, just because I I think that we're starting to see the volume that he's getting. 
in the limited amount of touches he's getting or a limited amount of snap counts he's getting, I think that they're going to start saying, hmm, maybe we should give him the ball a little bit more. Maybe we should up his snap count a little bit and go from there. Okay. Well, then let's talk about the running back I have right behind Estime, Gus Edwards. First game back, and this is – it's kind of a good and bad here. So first game yeah. back for Gus Edwards, he goes back to being Gus Edwards. Like, I, I even admitted in the columns, like, I had him too low because it was his first game back, and J.K. Dobbins has been great. So it's like maybe they're going to ease him back in. No easing in Gus Edwards, just like no easing in Christian McCaffrey. They both right, came back right. and went right back to the roles that they had before, which – kind of sours the J.K. Dobbins love because he was playing as a fringe RB1 in fantasy. Now he's back to being a low-end RB2, mostly because Gus Edwards is getting those red zone touches, and it's going to be frustrating if you had the choice. And, like, we can disagree. It's waivers. This is what you're shooting for is here. So would you pick up Gus Edwards knowing that you might have a weekly RB3, but that if something happened to J.K. Dobbins, there would probably be somebody involved in the passing game? Uh, probably not Vidal. I, I would be interested yeah. to see what happens because they don't really have a pass catching option right now that's been active if something were to happen. But all that being said, would you go estimate or Edwards if it's your team? Yeah, I'm going estimate in this one. It's another situation that's just hard to trust. Uh, you, you're relying on J.K. Dobbins to you know get banged up, and I don't like to rely on that because J.K. Dobbins. I, I had it at the beginning of the season. I thought he was going to have a bounce back season, you know, really good, really good season. As long as he stayed healthy, you, uh, you, the thing about Gus Edwards though, you have to understand that yes, if Dobbins does get banged up the, or if they start to run off a few games in a row and, you know, they get a playoff push, they're going to want JK Dobbins in the playoff. They might put Gus Edwards in there later on and, 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 you know, during the playoffs, things like that. But one thing that just really mucked it up for me was, the fact that they brought Hassan uh, Hassan Haskins in and he got the touchdown. I'm like, why? Did, what was what? This? I was like, I was like, why did Gus Edwards not get that touchdown? You've been giving him the ball. That's what you brought him in there for, and you give it to Hassan. Ha like, come on, guys. Like, uh, it, it's one of those situations <laughs> that it's it's hard to gauge. Um, so for me in this situation, for Gus Edwards, I'm like Mark Cuban on Shark Tank. I'm out, man. I'm I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I, I would prefer Andre Estime. All right, not investing in this one. All right, so then in the waiver column, I have the Algiers, the Benson, Ray Davises of the world and everything, but I want to go deeper real quick before we talk some wide receivers and get out of here. So the big name, similar to Gus Edwards, actually former teammates, Keaton Mitchell came yeah. back. Keaton Mitchell didn't, uh, this is in the Gus Edwards kind of situation where like, ooh, look at how much Mich Mitchell did in his first game back. I think this is one where it's more so, look at what Justice Hill hasn't been doing. Justin Hill has started to fall off efficiency even before this week. So I'm going to throw out this group of names that's at the end of the running back waivers and see is Mitchell the top guy or maybe it's one of the others. So I have Mitchell kind of after that I mentioned to Allen Davis, Benson's of the world and everything like that. So I'm talking Cam Akers, who I pointed out, and I'm sure you saw the same thing, is that when Aaron Jones got hurt and left, it was actually an even split with Akers and Ty Chandler. Not that Akers isn't the lead in the next man up, but I don't think it's going to be a bell cow role that a lot of people were hoping or expecting. So I have Akers, Keaton Mitchell, Khalil Herbert fumbled on his touch for the Bengals. Great debut, but he's still the next man up for the Bengals. Or, well, this is the interesting one, Emmanuel Wilson or Marshawn Lloyd, who could be returning. So like of all that group, is Mitchell the best one? Question mark, just because he plays for the Ravens? Yes, it, it's it's exactly that because it's an it's a high powered offense. They're the number one offense in the league right now as far as scoring points goes. So you want to have you want you want to have you know shares in that. So I would go. Yeah, I, I like the fact that Mitchell is there. If you're in a league that does re reward return yardage too, he he will he will get kickoff returns sometimes. Yeah. So that's something that you can also look into, especially like Scott Fishbowl uh, leagues. That's a guy that I've been looking at. Um, but yeah, I, I think he is the, he is the top choice for me out of that group. So let's talk waiver wide receivers then. And before we get out of here, so we mentioned Cedric Tillman. I don't know how he fell under 60%. The top two wide receivers and waivers are still waivers, wide receivers that have been there for actually the top three are wide receivers that have been there forever. And I don't know why they're still there. Juwan Jennings won. Actually, he's at 60%. I put him in there just in case. Uh, been saying like, he, when he's healthy, he's the one, he's the one, he's the one. And he was the one. So much so he led the team in targets despite leaving the field twice. 
twice he left the field and still the only th- the only downside is a complete sidebar here tip before we move on is just i feel like jennings as i compared him like nomar garcia pair of people who remember him in baseball or like grant <laughs> yes. like grant hill grant like hill. Yeah. every oh, wow. damn game he's getting banged up like dude like just how it's every game but anyway tillman and jennings are the top two there's xavier lee get i don't still don't know what people are waiting for in him but i want to talk about this next group of three because they're essentially you throw them up against the wall and it's like hey you're all the same guy let me just pick you randomly because the three that i'm about to mention are quentin johnston alec pierce and marquez valdez scantling what do all three do they go hit big plays, potentially a touchdown. Obviously, everybody's going crazy for Valdez Scantling over that one. I actually had to start him in the flex leagues, and I still lost because I went against Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, so I wasn't winning anyway, but I threw everything at the wall, and they actually hit on MVS. But I have him third of those because I feel like Johnston still should be ahead of those. But I put Alec Pierce in the same conversation of all three because Alec Pierce, as long as Michael Pittman is out, right. no matter the quarterback, even if it's Anthony Richardson, he's going to be – their version of Johnston slash MVS and MVS. The reason I had interest in him last week and the reason I said throw him out there in some desperation lineups is because what does Derek Carr do? She, she's gone, but he still takes three shots a game downfield. He still throws those up there. Yes, MVS could get you a zero, but so did Shahid. So does all these kind of wide receivers. So Johnston Pierce and MVS, are you? It's a two part question. Are you with me? And then they're, they're all in the same conversation. And then the second part of that, is Johnston, in your opinion, like me, kind of a step ahead of those two? He is, yeah, yeah. So it's Johnston for me, and then Pierce, and then MVS. I'm not chasing the MVS. I understand you you had to play him last week because they didn't have anybody to play at wide receiver, so they had to. Throw <laughs> but they out, won't. <laughs> but it, and, and they, exactly, and they had to throw out MVS, and he had two great catches for touchdowns, long bombs that Derek Carr loves to throw. Look, I'm a Raiders fan. So I know a lot about Derek Carr and his throw, <laughs> and how he throws, and, and it's great. Like, but but the thing is, I'm not going to chase that because j- he only had three targets, and and that's just something I'm not I'm not here for that. I, if if I'm going to get somebody off the waiver wire, I want somebody who's going to get targeted. Alec Pierce, seven targets last week. He also had the seven targets earlier in the season, so he's a focal point in this offense, especially like you said, if Michael Pittman Jr. is out. So I do like Alec Pierce. I, I had to grow on him a little bit because he was just a one a, a guy who did one thing, go down the field and that's it. But you got a guy in Joe Flacco or you got a guy in Anthony Richardson who can both throw deep. Alec Pierce could be a, 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 an example. I just like Quentin, Quentin Johnston just a little bit more because I trust yeah. Justin Herbert. I trust the offense a little bit more, although I don't trust the running game. I don't as, as far as the running backs go. I trust this offense because I know that the running game has been a staple point for them all year. Well, now they're starting to get Justin Herbert involved a little bit. And now he's starting to scramble a little bit. We saw him get a rushing touchdown. We saw him throw the ball. He's starting to 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 open the offense is starting to open up a little bit and they're recognizing that. So I like Quentin yeah, Johnson the, a lot. The Harbaugh play was not just to implement the play action. It was set up seven weeks to set up the play action. Like it was like, this is a long-term play is what he had. He's like, hey, I'm setting up the play action for down the season because I'm going to run the ball so damn much before we get there. All right, before I get a a streamer from you, the last group of wide receivers, I just want to see if you have a favorite because these are all, and I don't think there's a right answer. I have my order, but if you disagree, this is going to be like, oh, I think you're crazy, Tip. I have a bunch and because we're thin at this point, but we're shooting for upside. I still have McMillan at seven. I don't think he was 100%, and that's why he didn't step on the field. He actually didn't even run a route in that game for the Buccaneers. But they're on a bye, comes back, hopefully, with Mike Evans. Similar to my conversation about Shakir, I don't want McMillan as the one anyway. I want him as the two. I want him as the two in the Godwin role behind Mike Evans. But McMillan, Elijah Moore, Mechie coming off that game, whether or not Nico Collins comes back, Bateman, Judy, Pearsall, Thielen even coming back like of all those names you shook your head at one I don't know if that's going to be your answer but is there a favorite in that group M- Mitchie it, John Minchie the third okay. man and, like look I know I know that the Texans lost a heartbreaker on Sunday it was bad I'm here in Houston and I'm not a Texans fan but I did I, I heard it a lot from the Texans supporters right. and fans here recently and I, I will say this uh, Mitchie, it was, I even calculate, or it's even back from the beginning of the season where 
uh, CJ Stroud was talking up John Minchie, saying, man, he's running his routes. I love the way he runs his routes. He catches the ball smooth. He's fluid. Um, we all know his backstory. It's a great backstory that he overcame. I think that he's going to be on this field, and we no, no Stefan Diggs. We're not going to have to worry about that. Nico Collins, I feel like, only helps John Minchie a little bit because Nico Collins can do so much for this team that, you know, Tank Dell can't really do. Tank Dell is kind of a one guy, just go down the field. Although he's been utilized in the red zone, I've noticed that. But John Minchie can be utilized all over the field, put him in the slot. He can be their slot guy. I was really big um, for Jacoby Myers going to the, the Houston Texans because I thought that they needed that slot presence. But evidently the Texans were like, nope, we, we're going to stick with our guy. And he he delivered last week. He I took an opportunity to deliver. Next week they're playing against Dallas. Dallas does give up points to the slot receiver. Uh, so I would, I would, I really like John Mitchie. That's the guy that I'm looking forward to. And that's the guy that I was wanting to stream too, because I'm noticing in, in, in sleeper leagues, and, and I don't know about in Yahoo, but it, it, I'm pretty sure in Yahoo he's about less than 10, 15% owned. Oh, I, way, I, way low. Yeah, so in, in, in Sleeper, he's 3%. So it's like, this is a guy that I am heavily targeting. I'm spending I'm spending some money on it, too. A fab, I'm, I'm, I want Minchie on my team because you know that CJ Stroud's going to get better. He's had a really rough stretch, really rough stretch. But it's going to get better. He's got an eye for Minchie as well. So I think it's going to get better for him. All right, then let's get you out of here on this. Uh, I have buys and sells in the column. And I have some of my biggest ones. I, the, similar to our discussion earlier is I like to look ahead and kind of like say, oh, this is the opportunity later in the season, especially the playoffs. Like James Conner, I actually think he could be a buy at the same time of liking Benson because people are so worried and the schedule is juicy, which is why Benson's also intriguing. But do you have a favorite? You don't have to give me one of each. Just what your favorite buy or sell. And I, I don't even like the high low part of it because everybody's like that. It's so you get people tripped up with it. It's just somebody who you would like to get on your team, obviously context involved, but like a buy or somebody you're getting off of like right now, I'll give you my biggest one because he's been there for two, three straight weeks. Najee Harris, the schedule gets really bad and I do not trust Arthur Smith. I don't care about December. He didn't have Arthur Smith in December these years previously. So that's, I'll give you mine. And do you have one for you? Yeah, for me, a sell is Devontae Adams. I, I don't trust this okay. offense anymore. I don't trust what they're doing. It, dude, look, you have two, <laughs> like, these running backs that you got. They, they are bruisers. They are elite. They are, the, Brees Hall is an elite running back. Why are they running the ball less than 22 times a game? It's beyond me. I know it's probably Aaron Rodgers, but I don't want anything to do with Devontae Adams. Last week, I had Devontae Adams as a player to start, and they just totally wet the bed against uh, against the, the Cardinals. And it was it, it was mind-boggling that they come off of a win in, in against the Texans, and then they do that against a team, an Arizona team who's good, but they're not what they they're not what they did against the Jets. I think the Jets are in shambles. So I'm I'm selling uh Devontae Adams. I, I think you still hold on to Garrett Wilson. Uh you just ha- kind of have to at this point. You have to. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, but but Devontae Adams, I'm just I I don't I don't trust it anymore. It's funny you said that because I I asked Dane on Sirius XM yesterday and he's a Jets fan. I was like, Are you worried that this whole team just in about two or three weeks just starts shutting everybody down? And like even Aaron Rodgers, if he wants one more season next year, you just it's a I just feel like the end is coming. All the the end is already here for the Jets this year. But the end of following tip, by the way, at tip major. One more time, remind everybody what you got going on outside of this podcast and why they should be listening to you. Yeah, no. So I have a podcast on Thursday, uh, Thursday afternoon. Actually, we have two. So Thursday afternoon with Greg Kagalog, we have a question and answer podcast where we go on and we answer questions in the chat. We also have questions that were sent to us that we answer. We talk about the idiot call of the week. That's basically what we, we do prop bets. <laughs> and, and, and Greg, Greg Kellogg is going to be, he's a two-time idiot this week. So, so he, 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 he was off on two last week. And then we also uh, have the roll of dice player who, who are some players that we are, are thinking lower in, in ADP for the week, but get, that can return big on, on that. So, we talk about the roll of dice player as well. Then we have the Thursday check down. Uh, like I said, it's from seven. It's at seven Eastern to eight o'clock. And we have a pros versus Joe's segment where we bring on a pro in the fantasy industry and we bring on a Joe in the fantasy industry. And we have them give them their starts to stick. That we also have them give their sleepers to play as well. 
And that is just a really fun uh, segment that we have. We're doing pretty good. We're, we're, we're a little low on the, on the starts to sit, but we're getting at like right around 41% right now. So we're going to tick that up. But our studs to sits, we've been <laughs> sitting right at 60%. We've been killing it on those. So that, and then um, also on Thursday night after the game, I have the rip and tip space on X um, with my guy, Michael Rip Rippy. Uh, we just have fun, man. This is just kind of a reflection on the Thursday night game and a week, the week that's uh, coming. So we also talk about roll the dice players. And then we also talk about start stits, things like that, but trade questions. Um, and then on Tuesday night, so tonight, at, uh, I, I am, man. <laughs> and a Tuesday night at 7 p.m., that is no 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm sorry, I gotta go Eastern because I'm trying you're to do try the time zone. Right, right. Like this whole so eight o'clock Eastern, uh, 32 bit with um with Natter. So so I, I work with 32 bit as well. We do a podcast. We do some 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 prop betting. Uh, we talk about the week that was, and then we also talk about the the week ahead. So yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed having them on today. And uh, if you didn't notice, there's plenty of more opportunities to listen to tips. So please, again, <laughs> at tip major, I'll be back for the rankings podcast as always uh, another meanie and then a lot of more guests. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you next time. Peace.